So, is it good? It's amazing. Then I guess we're open. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underappreciated movies. My name's Charles Brunson, and all my life I've wanted to be famous. For this list, we're looking at the most memorable movies that either underperformed at the box office or are just generally not talked about enough. The focus will be on live action films, since animation deserves a list of its own. Which movie do you think needs more love? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Good Time After Twilight, Robert Pattinson seemingly turned to the indie scene for a palate cleanser. Good Time serves as a prime example of the actor's talent. Are you feeling this? Are you feeling the I'm feeling right now? After a botched bank robbery, Connie Nikas frantically tries to avoid arrest while looking to gather bail money to free his brother from Rikers Island. My brother's been arrested. He's being held at Rikers Island. Oh my god, that's awful. The film is tense, uncomfortable, and gritty, populated by desperate characters driven beyond their breaking points. Playing around with the heist genre's tropes, Good Time manages to be unpredictable while simultaneously building towards a climax that feels inevitable. Look, losers like you are incapable of taking care of themselves. You're either leeching off mommy, or leeching off welfare, or living off the government in jail. Right. That's you! You don't know the first thing about me, bro. What's to know? What's to know? So why doesn't anyone talk about it anymore? Number 9. The Birdcage Mike Nichols assembled an all-star cast for this hilarious and progressive comedy, but it doesn't get nearly enough love. It's all I am to you, isn't it? A meal ticket. Stand. Never mind about my feelings, never mind about my suffering, it's just about your show. Not even our show, your show. When their son Val announces he's getting married, partners Armand and Albert suppress who they are in order to impress the bride-to-be's conservative parents. What interesting China! Why, it looks like young men playing leapfrog. Is it Greek? Oh! I... I... I have no idea. Granted, the movie's premise is somewhat dated nowadays, but the characters themselves are still relevant because they feel like fully fleshed out people as opposed to basic stereotypes. Robin Williams and Nathan Lane did a stellar job bringing Armand and Albert to life delivering both comedy and depth to our screens. What does it matter? Take it all. I'm 50 years old. There's only one place in the world I call home, and it's because you're there. So take it. What difference does it make if I say you can stay or you say I can stay? So while it is a product of the 90s, the birdcage still has a place in our hearts today. Number 8. Locke this oft-forgotten film follows the titular character as he drives from Birmingham to London while engaging in numerous phone calls. Look, I need you to do this for me, Donald, right? So start rounding up some cowboys, then call me back. Considering that is the entire premise, you might be thinking that Locke sounds like a snooze fest. But it's just the opposite. The conversations are intense, and the story is nothing short of riveting. I want to move to a practical no, next step. I'm here in the dark, in our bedroom, and, oh God, nothing looks the same. I can't, I can't, I can't speak very well. Tom Hardy delivers a commanding one-man performance as the protagonist, conveying every emotion imaginable. Plus, the minimalist direction complements the movie's generally naturalistic tone, as audiences watch Locke's entire life change over the course of a singular car ride. It will work out. I will make sure of it. You'll see. You'll see. As far as experiments go, we'd say this one is a huge success. Number 7. Dan in Real Life Steve Carell is usually thought of as Michael Scott from The Office. Today, I got up, I stepped onto the grill, and I clamped down on my foot. That's it. I don't see what's so hard to believe about that. But beyond that, he's an extremely versatile actor, and Dan in real life shows us the full extent of his range. A widowed father of three daughters, the title character has more or less given up on finding love. But that changes when he meets a woman named Marie while visiting family. 
So you're telling me that you're one of those widowers with three daughters who preys on unsuspecting women in bookstores? It seems that would be me. Been there. Really? There's a fair amount of melodrama, but the movie also has a genuine warmth that's quite irresistible. Pleasantly charming without feeling too contrived, it's an endearing comedy, a lovable romance, and a heartfelt family drama all wrapped into one. Well, thanks. I'm touched. But I'm, I'm fine. You don't... We're having a private yes. conversation. Come on in. Sorry. No, no come on in. Like this is good. Come like on. To talk to Go you. ahead. I'm all ears. So the next time you talk about Corel, consider giving this film a shout out. Number six, Speak. This 2004 film had a spot at the Sundance Film Festival, but it didn't get much recognition after that. The low-key drama follows Melinda Sordino, a young girl who's unable to communicate following a traumatic event. You're Melinda Sordino. Aren't you the one who called the cops at Kyle Rogers' party? My brother was arrested at that party. Got fired because of it. She grows disconnected from her friends, family, and world as a result. But thanks to the power of art and unexpected friendships, Melinda slowly finds herself and gradually begins to heal. I think you should know what you stand for, not just what you're against. You should be able to show how things can be better. That's pretty darn good. Speak is emotional yet understated and feels incredibly realistic. The cast also delivers solid performances, with Kristen Stewart doing a particularly fantastic job. Hello? Anybody home? Are you deaf? I was just thinking that... It is a heart-wrenching watch, but a valuable one. Number 5. Gattaca a sci-fi drama, Gattaca was well-received by critics, but bombed at the box office. In the story's world, people are divided into two categories. Valids are made through eugenic practices, while invalids are born the old-fashioned way. I belong to a new underclass, no longer determined by social status or the color of your skin. Welcome to Gattaca, gentlemen. No, we now have discrimination down to a science. Vincent is a part of the latter group and grew up in the shadow of his valid brother. He aspires to make it to space, a goal that seems highly unlikely given his genotype. The movie raises important questions surrounding genetic discrimination while telling a relatable story through a dystopian lens. We have to ensure that people are meeting their potential. And exceeding it. No one exceeds his potential. If he did? It would simply mean that we did not accurately gauge his potential in the first place. Featuring nothing but great performances and brilliant direction, it is a must-watch. And if underrated 90s releases are your thing, we'd also recommend checking out Dark City. So it seems you've discovered your unpleasant nature. Who are you? We might ask the same question. Number 4. Bronson in between the Pusher trilogy and Drive, Nicholas Winding Refn directed a little film about the man widely considered to be Britain's most aggressive felon. <laughs> Starring Tom Hardy as Michael Peterson, aka Charles Bronson, this crime drama is vicious, darkly comedic, and relentless. The film mainly revolves around the lead's time behind bars and at a psychiatric hospital. You see, I didn't see a cell, a cage, a box. To me, it was a hotel room. Its disconcerting looks into his life are intercut with scenes where he breaks the fourth wall, adding to the project's surreal tone. Stylish, bizarre, splendidly acted, and one of a kind. Bronson might not be everyone's cup of tea, but nobody will forget it. So, big boy, what does the future hold for Michael Peterson? Number 3. How Green Was My Valley It might seem strange to describe a project with five Academy Awards as underappreciated. My father used to say that money was made to be spent, just as men spend their strength and brains in earning it, and as willingly, but always with a purpose. 
Yet, How Green Was My Valley's legacy tends to be summarized as that film that won Best Picture over The Maltese Falcon and Citizen Kane. But that polarizing decision aside, this stellar picture has a lot to offer. What does it mean, Mr. Griffith? It means that something has gone out of this valley that may never be replaced. We'd go so far as to say it's some of director John Ford's best work, even if his westerns are more popular. Looking into a family's struggles as their way of life is threatened, the movie is ambitious, well-acted, and emotionally moving. It is the same all over South Wales it is. Father, in Cardiff the men are standing in line to have bread from the government. Not for us, hey eh, lad? Number 2. 99 Homes Largely unnoticed upon release, this drama is a purposefully upsetting watch that might leave viewers seething in anger. 30 Did days. you in fact miss three payments, Mr. Yes, Nash? Yes sir, but I was told to. There's two departments at the same bank telling me opposing things and then just your recently Honor, I got, your final, I got a final judgment. notice. Set during the recession, 99 Homes is about desperation, greed, and shamelessness. Dennis Nash goes from helplessly watching the bank seize his family home to working for the real estate mogul who carried out the eviction. If you're interested, let me know. If not, you can use this to take your kid to Disney World and get yourself a job in Miguel and Cinderella's castle. Featuring career best performances from Andrew Garfield and Michael Shannon, the movie is uncompromising in its message, fury, and tone, never pausing for a chuckle. You took something and you didn't give it back, then the bank screwed you over. Take your pick, either way, you lost. As uncomfortable as it can be, every moment is worthwhile. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. In a world. Because this satirical look into the voiceover world is hilarious and smart. I remember hearing Don coo those words. In a world. In a world. You know? And when I heard that, I was like, I want to be a part of that world. Stardust. Because this is a fairy tale done right. Excuse me, madam, sorry. Um, this may seem strange, but have you seen a fallen star anywhere? <laughs> You're funny. No, really, we're in a crater. This, this must be where it fell. 50-50. Because this film about cancer manages to be emotional and funny at the same time. Oh, dude. Holy shit. The Trip. Because Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon are treasures. I think it does. I think if the North had a, the North could be a different country. It's, it has as much of an identity as Wales. You seriously saying that, that you think the North of England what? has a stronger, what? hang on, a stronger yeah. identity than yes. Wales? The Crying Game. Because this movie has a lot more to offer than just one twist. You're gonna have to do it, aren't you? Do what? Kill me. What makes you think that? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cats For better or for worse, this film has brought a lot of joy to people's lives. Okay, just kidding. Our real number one is… Number 1. Clue Flopping at the box office and dividing critics, Clue had to wait until it left theaters to find an audience. Die! Merely quoting, sir, from Alfred Lord Tennyson. Hmm. I prefer Kipling myself. The female of the species is more deadly than the male. But now it is an 80s cult classic. Like the game, it brings together an assortment of colorful individuals, executes a murder, and then sets out to find who done it. And what was your role in all this? I was a victim too. At least my wife was. She had friends who were socialists. Oh my god. The cast is simply fantastic, with each actor shining in delightfully over the top roles. Tim Curry's performance as Wadsworth the Butler, for instance, is simply epic. With three endings, plenty of laugh out loud moments, and a charmingly campy tone. This film proves that board games do belong on the big screen. That's what we're trying to find out! We're trying to find out who killed him, and where, and with what! There's no need to shout! I'm not shouting! All right, I am! I'm shouting! I'm shouting! I'm shouting! 
do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.